Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Stephen Haley Show, a very special edition of our weekly podcast because, one, we have our special co-host, Lexi, who is joining us, but we also have special guest, Christina Lauren, joining us today, which we are so excited about um, because they are here to celebrate the launch of their new book, The Soulmate Equation. Yay! Yay! We have we have our ARC copy right here. I have the um, hardcover right here. Yes, <laughs> mine isn't. My I ordered mine from Roman, so it's not here yet. But I am patiently checking my email for my arrival date because I really wanted the print. I remember so, writing your name. Did you? Oh my yeah. god! I was like, oh. oh. It it probably helps that my name spelled really weird too. It's like, oh, oh yeah, I knew exactly who it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I know we've been talking for like 20 minutes now. It's been great. But how's how's this week been? Tell us about it. It's been good. It's, yeah. it's busy. Um, we get to be together. So that is, I mean, normally we would be on book tour. So normally it would be like plane, hotel, bookstore, plane, hotel, bookstore, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, we miss seeing readers and everything, but it beats the alternative, which was being in our own houses Never leaving Alone. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Behind our own computer. Yeah. I mean, it's our first hardcover. So like all of our other books have been published in the trade paperback format. Yes. Um, and if we had a hardcover for them, it was just a library edition. So this is like a big deal. And it's, <gasps> you know, it's a different price point. Um, it's a different level of market engagement. So it's like exciting and also stressful. Yeah. Because it's new. I was going to ask about that because we we've read she and i've read all of your books and so we have you know, all of them like right up you could hear well, yeah, <laughs> <there's, I see laughs> they're they're but i noticed i was like this is their first hardback and i didn't know why that was is that like a thing in the literary world where if you go from paperback to to hardcover you're like okay this is like this is a big thing um, yes and no. I mean, I think it was a statement from our publisher that we are foundational authors for Simon and Schuster, and they wanted to honor that with this sort of more um, prominent format. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that trade paperback doesn't have as special and big a place for publishers. It's really about genre, right? So most romance readers are either going to read an ebook or trade paper or even mass market. You'll see a lot of those like smaller version paperbacks mm -hmm. in the in the grocery stores and bookstores. Um, but when you go into hardcover, you do get more prominent placement in bookstores. Um, you get a lot of those like table reads and end caps and that kind of thing. And so it is just a it's a little bit of a confidence boost from our publisher saying like 27 books have done great. Like here's hardcover. <laughs> so crazy. it's a big deal for romance specifically because not that many romance authors are in hardcover. So <gasps> we're super grateful. That's 27 really cool. books. That's so many. Do you think about the number and you're like, is that actually right? All the time. <laughs> so I don't books. remember half of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that I number, think... I'm like, I've read 25 of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, how many of the, these books have we read? Yeah. It's, it's all true. a fugue. It's like a, this blur. I feel like you should get a prize or something, having read that many. You know, we give you little badges. Can yeah. Like, can we get like a badge? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what we need. Have, like a little a little badge on there. It's like I've read all the books. <laughs> that's yeah. what we need to design. So then this book specifically, like I imagine that it was a little bit different writing for you guys because this book felt different from really anything we've read from you. Like it's in third person for one thing. And then I know, Lo, like I know you're super science -y. And I am not science -y in like the least bit but yeah. was writing something you're so familiar with and also writing in a little bit of a different perspective what was that like for you guys well actually we drafted this book in first person because that's sort of the most natural drafting process for us and we didn't know once we when we first started it we didn't know if we want to, would want to stay in that voice or knowing it was going to hardcover whether we wanted to try and write in like a slightly different style just to match like the format a little bit because many hardcover readers are very accustomed to reading in third person romance readers are very familiar with first person but when you go into more commercial mainstream fiction that's a voice that is sometimes harder for the general reader to get into so we just we actually wrote it in first person and then we edited it over to see which one we liked better and we just loved how it read it just felt like it fit the story and um anyway so that's just the point of view but it was really it was different it was fun mm -hmm. 
I mean, we added like more work for ourselves, basically drafting it twice. <laughs> I was but... going to say, you literally have to write the book twice, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but it was fun. And then the science piece was awesome. Like that part was super fun. We wrote way more science in the first draft. And then we kind of dialed it back so that it wouldn't be boring for most people. Cause I, you know, you get really nerdy and then you're like, okay, nobody cares about this or this or this. And so we just edited it down. Because I am not sciencey. Lo has okay. a PhD in neuroscience and her husband is a biochemist. Um, and so I love listening to her get nerdy. Like, I love it. I'll just be like, that is so hot. That is, I really like that. Um, but so I was sort of the one to like help, like dumb it down a little bit. Like, okay, okay. Like I found it super fascinating, but then it gets to a point where like the average person can't understand it. And so I was a good benchmark for that. Awesome that because I'm like I literally wouldn't know what the first thing about any of this means and even even without that we were still like okay wait so this is what this is what's happening how it's happening okay now I get it so I imagine you probably had to like condense that a little bit so having there you go the perks of having a co-author to like be mm -hmm. your benchmark in that way yeah I loved it I mean it was definitely different reading in third person because we, we talked about this too like we're both so used to first person from is mm -hmm. this your first third person book I was no we have that. we have one um other but it's a ya and it's actually third person present tense which is a very distant weird point of view which was intentional because it's kind of a ghost story um but this is our first like third person past tense kind of the typical um third person limited narration yeah do you guys think you'll ever go back to ya Oh yeah. If there's a, if there's a story that works for us, I mean, the very first book that we ever wrote that we got our agent Holly Root with was a YA novel. And we thought that's what we were going to do. You know, we were reading, you know, the sky is everywhere and Emma and the French kiss. And we were like, this is what we want to do. We just want to write these like swoony books about kissing and first love. And so we wrote this um, like paranormal romance where the fates were the bad guys and there was tons of skinny dipping and it got <laughs> us an agent but it was around the time um, there was a lot of paranormal romance. And so she was like, I, I, there's a 50% chance I can sell this and a 50% chance I can't. You know, there's sort of this fatigue happening right now. And it's funny because our, our um, career ended up going in a completely different direction. Beautiful Bastard sold first. And um, it's funny that, you know, it could have been completely different. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Beautiful Bastard. I have a confession. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I'm a new mom, so I don't have a ton of time to read right now. Um, so last night I'm in the middle of love and other words, but Haley was like, please pause, read at least the first chapter of beautiful bastards. So I was like, okay, <laughs> and I will do this. See both sides of you. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, those are two <laughs> sides of the Christina uh -huh. Lauren coin. And then 2 a.m. rolls around and I'm turning the last page and I'm texting them this morning and I'm like, so I'm a little tired. Uh, oh my God. We didn't even <laughs> talk about this, about being tired earlier. Yeah. So I uh, loved it. It was, it was great. So We've I've been hyping up the series for, for a months, long time trying to get her to read it. Yes. It's, it's, it's my favorite series. series, I think. Is it? Oh yeah. It's so good because then you like we because we have like kind of our whole friend group out right. here. We're all in the Pacific Northwest, and so like naturally we see these characters and we're like, wait, this is yeah. I want this friend group. Like this is kind of us because all, all we... the girls are friends, and then all of our husbands and boyfriends are friends too. And uh, they kept te there's text. I get like thirty texts over like a couple day period. They're like, Steph, oh my God, it's us. It's our friend group. You have to, <laughs> you have to read it. You have, this is like, if we were like different people in these cool lives, but also it's us at the same time. And I'm like, okay. I love that. <laughs> it's true. That's everybody, the best everybody though. Up. It's, it's so good. It's so, and that was like, that was the first time I literally remember finishing. So I read Unhoneymooners was my first book of yours that I read. Same. And same. then was I think I read a couple more I think I read like twice in a blue moon and then a couple more after that and you were like you need to read beautiful and I started to read it and you you were like you're not gonna think these are by the same authors you're really not <laughs> <laughs> like, just read it. 12 pages in we see Ben and Chloe and I was like oh it's that I kind of book <laughs> <laughs> but it's my favorite so I'm I'm so glad that Steph enjoyed it and we're like all right strangers next girl we got to get you on it and and you oh, have yeah. it we, we went to Barnes and Noble and yeah. and got you a copy so I own all of your books I just haven't 
had the time to dive into all we of them. We totally but... get that. We're <laughs> moms, mom too. We get that. And also, like, the wonderful thing about books is that they're not going anywhere. Totally. You can read it later when you have time. Well, my baby just started sleeping through the night. So, like, as soon as I put him Ooh. down at 7, I'm like, okay, put the put the blanket on. I'm sitting there like, this is my time. So, But, I mean, that's amazing that that's what you choose to do with your time. But even if you sit down with a blanket and a glass of wine and you stare at the wall for two hours, <laughs> yeah. that is also a valid yes. use of your time. Yes. I love that we get that. And it's funny because back to soulmate equation, like we, we talk a lot about mom life on our show pretty much every week because we're both moms to young kids. And so um, this was really interesting for us because Jess is a single mom and you like literally watch her go through these crazy hardships between like losing these accounts and trying to juggle her issues with her mom. And then mm-hmm. like, she's also got this situation with river going on and also being a total rock star to Juno. So I'm curious to know how that factored into like the creation of the novel, like just being this powerhouse of a mom. Well, um, I mean, so Jess is our first, like, We've had other moms in our books, but Jess is our first sort of single mom. Single mom, mom main character. Yeah. yeah, main character. And um, we, we, it's not that we had avoided it, but I mean, as moms, you know that like with kids comes responsibilities that you don't always want to read about. You know, it's a, it's a juggling act. It's like, um, you know, you got to have a babysitter. You got, where are the kids? Where, you know, but in this case, um, that's who Jess is. And it's, it's not just her story. It's, it's her and Juno. And, um, she was just, I mean, she was just there from the very beginning. And I think Juno ended up being one of our like favorite characters. She just kind of like She's snuck up on us and we loved her so much. I can't imagine this book without her. At and all. I, and I think writing it the way that we did, and it wasn't, I don't think we talked about this or planned it, but it ended up being the case that River and Juno had this connection that was their own thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And that he, and I think that that's the kind of person Jess could have ended up with is somebody who saw her daughter, appreciated who her daughter was and wanted a connection with her in a parental figure way um, that was independent of Jess's relationship with her. Like Mm -hmm. he was wanted to take on, um, that and I don't I think it surprised River right Mm -hmm. and I'm sure it surprised us as writers but I mean we had always written that he had a unique name and Juno had a unique name and they kind of bond over that I loved but their relationship I think was really lovely and it kind of grew as we wrote it Mm -hmm. So the relationship was my favorite part of the book, yes. I think. So my best friend, um, who actually was just here this weekend, she's also a single mom. And I remember texting her at like one in the morning and be like, oh, my God, Rachel, you have to read this book. I'm telling you the like parallels are insane. And she she was like giggling about it. And I was texting her all about the not without spoilers, but like the plot and stuff. And she was like, please, like, let me know what it's called. I'm going to buy it and read it as soon as as soon as you guys are done. So like for me, it was the first time I've ever re- read like a book like this kind of geared in that way, too, with a single mom being a hero character. And as a new mom, I've said so many times on our podcast, I don't know how women do it like I have a wonderful partner who's like so involved and I still want to rip my hair out half the time so I can't even imagine like having the burden of both roles and trying to keep your career going and having a you know romantic life so I I loved 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 that part of the book I mean thank you for saying that that's really amazing I I mean I think we are we're older than you guys, obviously. And so most of our friends who have kids have kids that are older and are more independent. And so I think it's really lovely to hear from readers um, who the like having a younger child and having that more hands-on responsibility, it resonates with them. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that you felt that way. For sure. And especially because I think another thing that Steph and I have in common with Jess is that she is her own boss, right? She mm-hmm. has her own her own work that she does on her own schedule. And so managing that aspect is also similar to what Steph and I do because as streamers, like we have our own channels, we're our own boss. So this is what, this is what we do. And however nice that is, like you, you do still have to hold yourself accountable. So that was another thing I wanted to know was because for you guys, you know, as authors, you're, I mean, you obviously have a deadline and things like that, but you, you really do like make your own job and you write when you write. And so 
do you kind of resonate or did you resonate with Jess in that sense where you, you ever had to find a juggle between like, cause you said it, you're both moms, like it throughout your career. Okay. This is my time to be a mom. This is my time to write or like finding that balance. Was that ever a struggle for you guys? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the guilt that comes with it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, cause there's never a good balance. Right. And when we first started writing, we both had full-time jobs and were trying to write and had young kids. And I think that that was just, it's like finding balance is impossible in that situation. So then when we started writing full time, um, it was easier. But then the reason we were able to start writing full time is because we were having successful books, which meant there was much more book stuff to do. And I do think, honestly, the first couple of years of our publishing journey were, are kind of a blur. And I mean that in terms of writing the books, but also everything that happened with our kids. It's just this sort of like blur of time because um, it's busy. Like you guys know, you have a lot of, it's more than just this moment here where you're recording. It's promotion, it's planning, it's scheduling, it's all mm -hmm. of, it's editing, it's all of that stuff, right? There's all the things behind the scenes that you do for this channel, so right? Seen. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so seen right now hearing you say that. <laughs> well, it's a true. lot. Yeah. And I think there's a, a spot, like Haley and I've had this conversation, especially for us, it's, um, there are days where you just, you know, look at your computer and you're like, I, I can't, I just, there's just so much to do. And for me, you know, my, my kid refuses a bottle, so I'm exclusively breastfeeding. And so there's these moments where I have to walk away from my stream for 15 to 20 minutes and, you know, the momentum goes away. And so you're just like, there's a lot of guilt associated with, you know, how do I find the balance between choosing my kid and choosing my career? And I think, um, for us, having a best friend who is in the same position is really how we're getting through uh -huh. this. So we love that you guys are co-authors and that you guys have like a similar support system because that's, it's been a really big part of this journey for us. Definitely. Absolutely. I'm so glad you guys have that. Yeah. We, we could not do this. Got it. No. No, literally because I, my husband and my daughter and I just moved up here. <laughs> what is it? Three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. We, no. we just, yeah, we just moved from Arizona. And so and she she's been up here for how long now? Three years? Uh, yeah, almost three years. So from Arizona. And so we were like, okay, if we're going to raise our babies and this is how we're going to do it, if we're ever going to move, because my husband's work from home now because of the pandemic, we're like, all right, this is probably the time to do it. And it's been so nice having support of other moms and other people who do make their own hours. And it's like, oh, okay, this is what it means to have like it, when it takes a village, it really does take support of other people who get it. And I think that Jess is like the ultimate example of that, right? Like she's got her grandparents and she's got Fizzy who totally deserves her own spinoff, by the way. I <laughs> want to know when that's coming, but like she, she, she does. And I feel like that this book is like the definition of having support because being a single mom or a parent in general, single parent is so much work that mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how single parents do it. Truly. I don't know I really how they don't. do it either. Yeah. But really, when is when is Fizzy getting home book? <laughs> like actually, <laughs> um, you are not the first to ask that, um, and I don't know. I mean, I would love to write a book about Fizzy. I think we both agree that she is a lot, she and is a lot. so oh, yeah. you know, we have written other characters who are a lot. Hazel is a lot. Um, Chloe is a lot. Harlow is a lot. We have these characters that have big personalities and they have a lot of energy, and it's just about writing. Figuring out who she is as the heroine of a story and as a narrator that doesn't overwhelm the reader so that they feel like it doesn't feel realistic. I don't yeah. know if I'm articulating that well. No, but, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Cause I was going to ask that too. Cause you notice that in a lot of books, the, the like the larger than life characters are typically the side characters, right? They're the okay. ones that make you laugh or add the extra spice to the story. Whereas the, the hero, the heroine is like, they've got that narrow focus. So I just, I loved Fizzy and we I loved her. Loved all this. That was like the first, cause I read it slower than these two. And so I remember just texting over and over again, like, why is she me? And why do I love her so much? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like in Josh and Hazel, Hazel is very similar in some ways to Fizzy, that they are both like saying what everybody is thinking and that, you know, but um, it took a very specific you know, hero to come in for Hazel. So it would be about figuring all of that out. I like, think who's busy going to fall in love with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, oh, to get it so yeah. Yeah. Having a counterpart, she would need someone similar to Josh. Who's like, wait, not nearly as crazy. And but maybe not think about Bennett. I honestly don't think that anybody 
would be better for Chloe than Bennett. You know, no, as much exactly. as butt heads, I feel like Chloe kind of she's she's up here and and Bennett's up here, and I think they balance each other in a really weird but perfect way. I want you to know that Lo is taking notes to that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we writing down some, ideas. We've had some discussions, and the um, <laughs> things you are saying are like. <laughs> that's really good to know you know what? that's true honestly though it's like i remember in march madness in your facebook group i was like oh, my two favorites are against each other and i oh, love no. i love josh and hazel like it was one of the probably like the one of the first few of yours that i read and i was like what can compare to this and then i read love in other words and i was like well fuck. and they're such different <laughs> up, right they're such oh, night and day up. yeah they're, they're totally i think we both that's both our favorites is love in other words yeah literally well, the you know, the day that Haley finished she ordered me a copy and she's like it's on the way she's like Steph you don't have an option it'll be there tomorrow and I'm like okay that's amazing I <laughs> ordered an ebook and a physical copy like what can I say I almost, I was funny because I saw somebody ask if you guys were signing other books outside of soulmate equation at Romans and I was like is it too late to add love in other words to my order to get a signed copy of that too like it's already on my bookshelf but I don't mind <laughs> but, um... I, I just realize how lucky we are that we kind of just get we get to write beautiful bastard and we get to write yeah. love in other words mm -hmm. and autobiography and you know um I feel so lucky that we just sort of get to write the book that's in our head and that our readers are for the most part like along for the ride yeah mm -hmm. our publisher is not making us stay in one genre lane within romance and our readers are like okay we get it we can't predict necessarily what you're gonna do you're <laughs> just gonna give us kissing and a happy ending and then other than that yeah. we don't know like so. our next book that we're gonna start working on is a sexy clue and we're like that I cannot believe that we get to do this that yeah. we get to go from one thing to like the exact opposite it's fun so I read the blurb on that. Is there, like, what are you allowed to say about it so far? Is there anything we're allowed to know or is it just what's on the blurb? Well, so the book that comes out next year is, we don't have a title for it. So we would love it if you guys- <laughs> Which is get, turning into a red right on that. Yep. Um, but we're <laughs> calling it adventure, exclamation point, romance, exclamation <laughs> point. Um, and basically that one is like romancing the stone meets the hangover um gender swap so she's the cowgirl and he's the city boy and it's been that is i mean we love soulmate equation we love all the books we've written we are like very proud of all of them this adventure romance one was the most fun we have ever had writing a book just like really? delightful. like because i couldn't wait to start in the morning every day they're searching for treasure they're searching for butch cassidy's treasure that's supposedly still hidden in like the but you have the opening scene of the Indiana Jones book where, um, what is it, The Last Crusade? So mm -hmm. it's like the red rocks and, mm -hmm. you know, it's like that. And they're out there searching for treasure. So we got to write like a treasure book. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And it's fun and it's super sexy. And funny. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's so different than everything else you've written. Yeah. 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 It is. It's a lot it's a lot bigger expedition. And then we have much more sexy stuff than we have had in books recently. So that's also been really fun. Um, and then the next book after that is The Sexy Clue. And honestly, we would tell you guys more if we had more to tell. We've just outlined it. Mm -hmm. So that oh. the outline is with our editor. And so we're just waiting for her to be like, go forth or to be like, I don't think this is going to work. Like, but if it, if it works, it takes place in like the French Mediterranean. Like an island off of the co oh, southern coast of France. Yeah. And she's the, there when it's from Chicago and she's going to go and meet a really sexy butler on this private island. And it's just like, <laughs> I know, we like cannot wait. Like, um, just let us so add it. I just want to write it right yeah. now. That's the that's got to be the best feeling is when you have an idea that you're so obsessed with that you're literally just ready to jump on it and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. just need the green light. Like, give us the green light already. Yeah. Like, when <laughs> do, we do you guys feel that way regularly with your books? Like, where you're like just amp chomping at the bit to start writing? Yeah, I mean, we told when we told our agent, like, we were like, we were kind of thinking because we had this book that was like a little quieter and more of a character driven idea, but then we were like, but we. We're kind of wondering if we could write a sexy clue and, and she our, was like if she was like give yes. it to me yes, <laughs> yes. I put it directly in my veins yeah 
So now the idea, the outline is with our editor and we'll just see. Oh, how- the merging of two worlds. I'm so excited because when I like was a kid, one of my favorite genres was like kind of like mystery and stuff like that. Yes. So yes. mystery yeah. romance, you guys got me hooked. <laughs> and like the murder mystery with comedy yeah. and lightheartedness and then add in sexiness. Like, come on. Win. That's going to be so fun. If I we can it. pull it off, it'll be great. Yeah. If we can't pull it off, don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> So I, because I thought I remember in your announcement that it was the at least the treasure hunt book was going to be like a duology that there were going to be two of them. Did I make that up? Well, so it's a two book ser- It's a two book deal. So the yeah, first okay. book is the adventure romance. The second book is sexy clue. So oh, they will. Okay. So they're part of the same. Okay. I yeah. Know what you're it's just the contract. It's not like a yeah. series. Do you feel like this is going to be almost like a merging of the writing styles between your contemporary romance and your sexy books? I think this will be a good bridge. I yeah. know that our readers want to see more of the sexy stuff that we used to write. I think a lot of it for us was like, once you make the world bigger for your characters, you pull them out of the bedroom just sort of by default, mm-hmm. um, which isn't to say there's better or worse. I think like like the sexy times in Josh and Hazel, I think are some of our best, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then on Honeymooners is much more closed door. We tried to add in more sex scenes in the honeymooners and the character like they were just awkward it just felt like and we don't speak about our characters this way they yeah, don't like, we're not like they speak through us yes but in that moment like all of and ethan were looking at us like do you mind do you mind this is awkward <laughs> okay um, wait, we should talk about on honeymooners really quick because this this TikTok, like wait, what's going on it's crazy so like she's a resident She's our resident TikTok yes, person, expert right? And TikToker. So you're the one who I think sent it mm-hmm. to us originally, and then it just exploded. Well, I mean, the TikTok itself was genius. It caught me. I was like, "Wow, what a great story!" Wait, this sounds really familiar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's why it worked because people mm-hmm. were like, "You are kidding me!" That happened, and then to find out it was a book, yeah, they suddenly were like, "Oh, I want that book." Yep. So, what has that been like on your end? Have you guys seen like, "Holy shit!" But our books are sold out everywhere. Like, what do yes. we even do? Yes. Yeah, so um, on Honeymooners came out in 2019, and, um, and it's, it does it's really, sold well. really well. Yeah, it sells really well. It's one of our books that like it just keeps going, it just keeps going. Um, but then all of a sudden, one day, it was like in the top 100 on Amazon, and and um, we saw the TikTok. And at the time, I think the TikTok only had like like a couple hundred thousand, uh, yeah, views. like six hundred thousand views or something. And by the end of the day, it had like two million, and, and it sold out on Amazon. And and um, it's and so the, it sold out. They had to print like reprint like fifty thousand more copies, <gasps> and it's back That's in stock crazy. now. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's hit the USA. It's hit the bestseller lists two weeks in a row now, yeah. two years after it came out, almost to the day. Like, how does that even happen? <laughs> That's not a thing, right? Like, But it, the thing is, and we, we talk about this because one, TikTokers don't like to be marketed to. So it's not, mm-hmm. it doesn't work when an author goes on and is like, here is my book. I'm going to tell you a funny little anecdote. Like that, <laughs> nobody that, cares. That's not a, <laughs> it doesn't seem at least like TikTok really responds to that kind of marketing. And also it's there's a lot of friction in that purchase. You have to leave the app. You have to go look for the book and you have to buy it through a separate retailer. So you don't embed the link into the post. So it is kind of a mystery, like how this happens. People really have to be motivated to go find it. But whatever it is, like whatever that meme is, it's like, I don't get it, but I love it. Like that is us <laughs> right now because whatever it is, it's been great. You guys also, know. It just shows that like readers are the best hand seller of mm-hmm. any book everywhere if like if there's anything that's going to get you to read a book it's going to be somebody that you think is funny or cute or whatever that says like this book is hilarious or whatever it is that you're interested in um so why we always tell people like if you love a book like shout about it review it and you know all these things because that's honestly the best way to get books into new hands i think that book talk has i mean it's blown up in recent months yeah you know and i think that book talk has done wonders for for the publishing industry and reading in general you yes know? Mm-hmm. i'm i'm so excited about it and i see you know tiktok's like the one about the unhoneymooners um and and others and i've read a lot of books this year and I would say like (laughs) so many it's like over 100 um but I would say like 90 percent of the books that I've read this year I found on TikTok Mm -hmm. and I think that really amazing yeah yeah have they all been of the same caliber of quality would you say um you know I think quality is subjective (laughs) I think that's fair you know what are you 
like, what are you reading for? You know, are you reading for the sexy times? Are you reading for literature? You know, I read like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and that was beautiful and I loved it. But I also really loved a lot of books that, you know, people would argue maybe aren't of the same quality, but that doesn't mean I, I love them any less. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. Well, I love too, because Barnes and Noble has a book talk table mm-hmm. now. I was literally yeah. just about to say that. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we, we were there. Steph was, so Steph has a bunch in, in her, one of her rooms in her house. She has like a bunch of the Billy bookcases, like these ones behind me. And she's like, Haley, we got to buy books. Like I need to fill these bookcases. And so we went to Barnes and Noble and we spent an undisclosed amount of money on new <laughs> books. And we were like, but like the third we table through, when we walked in, it was like two with giant signs that said book, po- book talk made me buy it. Yeah. And we were like, yeah. we I took a picture of them and I was Instagram storing and I was circling I and, it, and there was like, it was literally like 15 out of the like 50 books. So I was like, well, we've read all of these. <laughs> it's like definitely yeah. yes, we're influenced. Pictures, I'm like, I've read like half of these books yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from book talk. Uh-huh. And, put, and on, on Honeymooners was on that mm-hmm. table. That's sure amazing. Enough. So it's power. social media is weird. TikTok in general, I'll never really understand it because I, I had a moment where I had a TikTok that went viral too. And it was when I told my husband that I was pregnant and it was a very like odd thing to, I, I had posted like two TikToks before that. I had like quite literally two videos on there. And then I went to the gym and I checked my phone and she's texting me and she's like, Hey, so now that you're viral, like this is what you should do. And I was like, now that I'm my, <laughs> my video blowing up and she's like Haley where have you been for the last hour and then sure enough it's got over a million and I'm like what's going on and now it's over seven million right? yeah it's over still and then there's like co- companies reaching out to like interview and like talk share the video and I'm like this is so weird so I feel like the girl who recorded it she's probably got a lot of stuff going on too because I think she's blowing up from a video yeah, she's yeah. Over she was, 000 like, followers. yeah I think she had like 8,000 beginning of the day mm-hmm. and then she by the end of the, the first day she had like 30 something thousand and by the after a few days she had over 100 and she's really sweet she's been dming us on instagram because she sent it to us we had been sent it and then she sent it to us she's like did y'all see this and (laughs) we're like yes there you are like we were trying to figure out how to so she's really sweet she did one for beach read i saw that went viral too for emily henry and so part of me was like oh i'm curious to know if it's had like a similar effect on on her because I know she just had a new book that launched recently too. That's that's doing really well. It hit number one on the bestseller. Yeah, list. I was so I was yeah. like, yes, romance. We love to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that I was love another thing that part. I love so much about you guys is you guys are very sociable in the writing space, right? You've got like a ton of authors that you are like always talking to or engaging with and promoting. Which, first of all, we love that. We love supporting other women. Hell yes. But also, like, how do you get to know all these people? Because I'm sure a lot of it is networking. But is it just like, hey, you're an author, I'm an author. Like, how do you how do you get to know each other? Well, like back in the before times, <laughs> we used to meet each other at like big conventions and stuff. Um, in romance, in particular, there'll be these huge signings where there's like you know 200 authors and people can buy a ticket and come in and the tables are filled with books and they'll just get what they want and go to each table and get them signed. And so it was a little bit like, you know, getting to see your coworkers and, and everything. And it was great. Or, or we see them at like, you know, group bookstore signings and stuff. But now it's like talking to each other on Instagram or talking to each other on Twitter, mostly just reading each other's books and going in each other's DMS and sort of fangirling. Lo is (laughs) so good at like Instagram and um yeah you'll just reach out to i mean the thing is there's it is such a supportive community mm-hmm. i think romance especially is like really centers women in the genre and so i think that makes it much easier just to go out on a limb and reach out to somebody mm-hmm. and i realize that i'm saying that as a perspective of part of a co-author duo that does have a successful publishing career so it probably is harder for people who are just starting out Mm -hmm. but if any of those people hear this you know particular interview like it's always okay to reach out to us especially if you're new especially if you are you know um wanting to write an own voices story and you're not getting heard like that this is our job is to bring those voices forward that is a really important part of our job so I love that. Love that, that makes me so happy. Well, it's it's true. And social media in general has made like people in general more accessible, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you know, back in like I'll never forget <laughs> going back to the Harry Potter talk we had earlier. I wrote. I was probably maybe ten, and I wrote a letter to J.K. Rowling, 
And it was like, I literally her PO box was, I had to like Google it and that was on her website. And I like wrote a letter and that was my only way to like send fan mail. And she like, I'm sure it was like a publicist or something, but I got something back in the mail and I was like, oh my God, like freaking out over it. And that, that's how that used to be, right? And getting in touch with celebrities, quote unquote, or just, you know, pe public figures in general. And now, you know, having this platform that everybody's a part of, right? Mm -hmm. Most people have Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or, or TikTok. And so it like almost levels the playing field where you, you can have these conversations with people and get to know for you guys, I'm sure get to know your communities better. Like I freaking love your Facebook group. I, I like joined it and I was like, I feel right at home here. <laughs> <laughs> nice group of people. It is. It's really yeah. lovely. Do you, and so I, is that just something you built over the years? Like how does that happen? We actually built it pretty late into the mm -hmm. publishing journey because it had always been our understanding just coming up in fandom, fandom. <laughs> that like private Facebook groups are where the wank happens. You know, that's where all the, the drama happens and the trash talking. And we just don't, we don't like getting involved in drama. So we really yeah. stayed away from that. And, uh, and then we realized, oh, it might, you know, oh, and then, you know, Facebook makes it like impossible for people who have liked your page to actually ever see your content. Yeah. You have to literally believe them to show stuff to people. And so we were like, well, maybe if we have a group, people who really want to see what we're doing can check into the group and they don't have to go like hunting for information. And mm -hmm. it's turned out to be really lovely. Everyone's it's so nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're all in there. there. To join it. <laughs> yeah, like Sally Thorne is in there. As, like, Jen DeLuca you know, Jen DeLuca, Kylie Scott. And, and, and yeah, it's yeah. really fun. I literally have all of these books, the authors yeah. of these mm -hmm. books on my shelf behind me. <laughs> like literally Walmart's up there, like they're all up there. That's That makes me so happy. And so there, again, it's like people supporting people. I feel yeah. like the author community is very, like, I don't know. I think for, for Steph and I, and I, Steph, I don't want to speak for you, but I know over... The years in streaming like there's almost been a sense of like competitiveness among a lot of streamers where it's like people are afraid to collaborate or afraid to like promote other people because they think oh well they're just gonna watch they're gonna watch this other person instead and not watch me and it almost becomes like a fight for viewership in that way mm -hmm. so it makes me happy to see that you know and over the years we've learned that's not the case everybody watches everybody there's there's room on here for everyone it seems like it's pretty similar in the writing world. It's like there's books to go around for everyone. Yeah. Just because they read your book doesn't mean they're not going to read our book. Like, and in fact, it's probably the other way around. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, if you read a book that you love, what's the first thing you want to do? You want to go yeah. out and read another book. You know, and sure. Christina always says it. She says it best, which is that like books are not cars. You don't buy one. Yeah. Right. You 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 read a book. You love it. You want to read another book. So, um, I mean. It might not be the case in every industry, but this is an industry where rising tides really do lift all boats. Like yeah. if we promote other authors and our readers love those books, they're going to stay readers. We don't want to lose readers. We don't want to lose readers to all the other things that they can do in their free mm -hmm. time, right? The perfect yeah. example of that was I bought Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall because I, I saw that. you guys on the blurb. And Isn't I was it, like, well, that's so, it's so funny. Well, when, it's we hilarious. Went, when we went through Barnes and Noble and we were pulling, a, I think I bought 30 romance books that day, but we were pulling <laughs> books off the shelves and I was like, oh, Christine Lauren's on the cover. Oh, they have a blurb here. Oh. And we, we were like giggling because you guys have blurbs on every, every cover. We love it. I know. We love it. You and Sarah J. Moss, like literally every, every <laughs> book I own has a quote from you guys. <laughs> and we were so excited. We're just like, put us on the cover. We like books. <laughs> we were so excited because that's kind of how we, that's actually how our, our book club was founded was, um, Haley asked me to read Lainey Taylor's books and then that transferred into Sarah J Moss books and then that transferred and we just kept going down the line and as soon as we saw all of you guys on each other's covers and stuff like that we just had these like mega fangirl moments where we were like they're all friends like us and so it was really <laughs> exciting to see so it's actually funnily enough because I know you guys are, are friends with Sarah Moss right like I've seen you guys do Instagram lives together so it's kind of thanks to her that I started reading your books because I had just, so our little book club group was on me to read Throne of Glass. It's eight books. It's <laughs> huge. And I'm sitting there like, I do not have the time to commit to eight massive books, but they made me do it. And so I did. And it was, it was awesome. I loved it. But by the end of it, I was like, oh my God, my brain, I, I need a break from fantasy. Like, what do I do? And I think one of you for my birthday got me the unhoneymooners. I think it was, it was you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alexis. And I was like, okay, 
I'm going to say, like, this is the perfect book to, like, take a break from fantasy because that That's was a lot of what true. we read. true. That was our yeah. first, like, rom-com where we were, like, introduced to that genre as a group. Yeah. We were like, okay, yeah. we Unhinged need something was fun. was my first rom-com. Yeah. Yep. We, we were like, we want something fun and, like, bite-sized, just like a single book to sit down, read in one sitting and, like, kind of, like, refresh the palette because fantasy books are really heavy. And then <laughs> that did not happen because we ended up buying all of your books and just, like, one after the other through the line. It was basically its own series for us. So yeah. that was amazing. We're like, when like, are we gonna stop? We're like, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok video though is for you guys to do recommendations for people that need a break from, you know, fantasy or need a break from rom com. You can be like, if you love these books but you want to try a different genre, read this. Like, yeah. I think readers would appreciate that. Do you so. do you guys find that you read books outside of your own genre very often? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, really? And you what do you guys like read? Well, we, uh, we always say like, you need to read ab above your pay grade. So even if you're like reading or writing romance, you should read literary, you should read thrillers. Um, Lo reads a lot of literary fiction and nonfiction. Um, I love thrillers and suspense. Mm, me too. Um, so we just will read like, I mean, if for us, it's not even genre. It's like, if we read the, the summary and it's something we're interested in, we're like, yeah. Yeah. We don't really have too many genre limits. Yeah. I mean, we get sent a lot of books to blurb. And so it's good, I think, to step out of romance too, because one of the things about writing genre fiction is you can become kind of an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. Like people sort of start writing the same things as everyone else. And I think romance actually is sort of in one of those cycles right now where we yeah. need to really like break out and be a little bit braver. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way to do that is to read completely different genres than what you write. If you write romance, go read a couple horror, read some sci-fi. If you write fantasy, go read, you know, rom-coms and, you know, memoir comedy. Like, just yeah. do something totally different. Yeah. Yeah. And so how did you guys know that romance was what you wanted to do? Was it just we, because you were already writing fan fiction? You really like writing kissing. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I mean, I never wrote Harry Potter fic because I was never, like, super invested in, like, the love life or the aspects you know of yeah. harry potter so my first fandom that i wrote for was twilight because um i loved those books but you know for some people they finished the you know I, we got pulled into deeper water and we're like what what that's all we get <laughs> we've read three and a half books from yeah. fade to black yeah. it was so frustrating i remember reading breaking dawn and i was like and I get it, right? Stephanie Mormon, like I or Stephanie Meyer is Mormon. And so it was clearly that was a Freudian slip. So you know what I mean? Like she, I understand that her, I remember reading an interview with her once and she, they asked if her being Mormon affected the way she wrote. And she was like, absolutely. Like, I think it affects everything about me. And so it wasn't surprising that it was a fade to black, but it didn't change me from being irritated over it. Yeah. Like, I want to know what happened. We've been very <laughs> invested in these characters. But we, I mean, we, we love Twilight. We're I mean, honestly, like, too. she's been very lovely about sort of passively allowing this fandom to flourish and write incredibly sexy stories about these yeah. characters <laughs> that she created, so. Oh, for sure. Well. Perfect segue. So, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> we found out that Steph is actually very talented at writing fic. Um, I'm going <laughs> to. So, Lexi, why don't you tell them your, your confession? Oh, this is Go so ahead. good. <laughs> So, um, in our book club, it is kind of a running joke that I have a crush on Billy Black. <laughs> <laughs> like, full on super crush. Every time we watch, because we watch the movies together or whatever, and she'll be like, oh, the scene, Billy's coming. <laughs> and we're like, that is not what happens. Oh, but it's totally we what happens. Reading, I think we were reading A Quarter Silver Flames at the time. Um, yeah. And so we got into this ridiculous conversation um, about fanfic and Billy Black. And uh Asriel. Asriel was Steph in Steph decided to write Asriel and Lexi <laughs> yeah it, it was, was amazing a black poster in the background we tried to find it for you guys last night we were like scrolling through our Twitter DMs trying to find it so we oh, could read it to you God. oh it was so funny was this so is good. amazing this is why fandom it. is amazing it is it's so good right it's like you know what and people I don't know. I feel like it's so easy for people to to make fun of us for, for things like that. And I'm like, dude, I have no shame whatsoever. Like, I think it's freaking awesome. It's hilarious. It is awesome. Plus, I don't remember yeah. the That's last where the time joy is. I laughed it's like that hard. hard people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we so we were doing a podcast with um with uh, Sarah McLean um, and Jennifer. How do you say her last name? Pro Cop. Pro Cop. So they do this um, podcast called Faded Mates. 
and we were doing a like trope throwdown. And, and, um, one of the things we like, the craziest things were coming up. Like we, one book was about aliens and one was about like centaurs and we were talking about nodding and like all of these things. And it's like, these are things you can only say like to your people that like yeah. know what you're talking about. So we always joke that we're like ruined for, for polite society because <laughs> you know, fandom did that to us. Yeah. Which is the same way we, there's like lingo on Twitch that you mm -hmm. use that we have literally adapted into our everyday. Con so for instance, there's an emote that you can use in chat that's called pog champ. And it's a moment where like something cool happens and it's a face that's like, Surprise, no way. Yeah. And so it's like a people will literally will be in conversation because most of us in our friend group are, are part of Twitch. We're like, oh my God, pog champ. <laughs> and we'll like, say it and we're like <laughs> we literally just say pog champ in the middle of a conversation. So we, we totally know what you mean. It's our, it's our own lingo, right? Yep. It's like you, you just kind of develop it over time. But yep. I have no, like I said, I don't care. Yeah, that, people don't like it. They don't have to like it, but it, exactly. it reminds me. Okay. So we were going to talk about this earlier about how some people it's like, what is it with this stigma around romance that people seem to like associate it with guilty pleasure? Like what are, what are your thoughts on that? And how do we break that? Because I hate it. I think it has to do, honestly, it's things that girls slash women love. That the world just wow. loves to look down. Like they deem them as less serious, less mm -hmm. worthy of praise, less time, intellectual, less intellectual if women love them, whether that be music or books or TV or whatever. And it makes me crazy, but we had a we had a review the other day that was a great review. It was it was for my favorite half night stand, which is a book I love. It was four stars. She said all these wonderful things. And at the, the end, she said, I'm giving this my highest uh, rating that I can give a romance because I don't think romances are ever literary enough to get five stars. And it was just like, this what? is a woman with some deep internalized misogyny that like cannot see the value in a romance novel in order to give it a full rating that she would give literally any other genre. Mm -hmm. And so... On the one hand, it's like, well, thank you for loving our book to the maximum of your abilities, but also <laughs> like give romance more credit than that. If you are finding joy in these books and you are seeking these books out and reading them in your spare time, give them the respect that you're giving them with your time in a rating. So I think, you know, we have this tendency to really see romance as like, you know, it's like the Twinkie or the the junk food of the publishing industry. When in reality, it you know sells more books than any other genre um, yeah. by almost double. Yeah, like really? we should celebrate things that are about hurt and pain and kind of look down and you know on things that are about joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we do that. I don't yeah, know I don't why know. we put more importance on struggle well, than we do on joy i remember when um like 50 shades came out and it was kind of a big deal because it was at least from my time it was like the biggest mainstream kind of sexy uh -huh. time book that came out where like you know the big quote was like all of like the you know 40 something housewives are reading it and stuff like that and so i remember thinking like oh I'm so curious. I've never read an erotic book. Again, I was like 21, right? I've never read an erotic book. I want to <laughs> I want to check this out and I remember very distinctively buying a Kindle so I could read it so that when I was on an airplane or I was, you know, wherever people wouldn't know that I was reading 50 Shades of Grey. And then now, you know, as an adult who you know, has her own life and everything. I, I, my friend was donating uh, all of her, her like romance books. Cause she said, you know, I don't have the space for it. And, um, I'm probably not going to reread them. And I was like, can I have them? I want, I want to put these on my bookshelf. Like I need books, for my bookshelf, but like, also like, I would love to have all these romance books. And she's like, are you sure? Like you want these on display? And I was like, absolutely. And I'm, you know, bought the beautiful series in physical copy and all of that stuff. So I just, I really hope that with book talk and stuff like this, where reading becomes more mainstream and people are willing to talk more about romance and stuff like that, that the stigma kind of with a lot of, you know, millennial and Gen Z generational stuff will kind of also come into its own and people will be more yeah. loving and accepting of it. Yeah. You so know, too. a lot of the books that I've read recently, um, I read almost exclusively on the Kindle now and a lot of Kindle Unlimited books and a lot of those books have half naked men on the covers uh -huh. you know and and when I first started reading them I was like I don't want to put this on my Goodreads because I don't want people to see it and then I was like wait stop 
like I had to, I had to like mentally stop myself from that internal narrative mm-hmm. and be like, you know what? Fuck it. Look at yeah. this half naked, naked man. You know, it doesn't mean that <laughs> going back to what we were saying earlier, quality is subjective. You know, it doesn't mean that this book is any less of a great book because there's abs on the front. <laughs> but also you don't see guys, hours, you know, you guys don't see guys shelving stuff like, or like hiding the orc cover, you know, <laughs> from their Goodreads feed and like, you know, the like serial killer books with the like blood slash or whatever. I mean, I think, you know, as a society, we have always been more comfortable with violence than sex, right? Mm -hmm. So like when Christina worked in the junior high counseling office um, before we um, left our jobs and started writing full time, like parents would be like, you know, does this have any sex in it? And it would be Hunger Games. And Christina's like, well, I mean, it has children killing children. (laughs) And they were like, no, no, but does it have sex? And she was like, no. And they're like, okay, great. So like parents are okay with the violence, but they don't want the sex. And I think that always blows my mind, you know? Yep. So we, we actually just, I talked to Steph about this the other day. We were at, we were at Safeway um, and we had this <laughs> long story short, I'm pregnant and I have a, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, I had an ultrasound that said that I, I may have placenta previa. And so my doctor called and they were like, Hey, um, just FYI, you're on pelvic rest until we can make sure that your previa is cleared. And I was like, sick. And I, I was streaming when that phone call came through and I was like, guess what chat? No sex for your girl. I'm on pelvic rest. And the, the, what drove me nuts was the immediate response was, Oh, poor Rick, poor your husband. I know. Are his Thank hands you. broken? <laughs> Those are the faces that I was hoping to see. I was like, excuse me my poor husband like what about me and i was so angry and so it's it's so interesting that like the idea of especially like whether it's women or just in general that we are like so uncomfortable with the idea of of sex and women enjoying sex is like it's so ancient to me now but Mm -hmm. but truly i think it took me reading romance novels to really be like okay this is actually no i'm a woman and i deserve i deserve to like sex and have fun with it and enjoy reading it or experiencing it and it's like female pleasure matters too and so but this is so wild to me because on the one hand women aren't allowed those sorts of like seeking that kind of pleasure talking openly about like prioritizing women's pleasure yeah. and that, and then but we're also expected to like deliver this right yes. like poor husband who has a wife on pelvic rest like you owe him this so he is now like going to be lacking something important but also let's not talk about your own pleasure it this kind of stuff makes me crazy it just yeah. makes me nuts and that's why like i, I we were we were laughing about it because i was like screaming about it at safeway and stuff was like oh my gosh yeah. the cashier is literally looking at you like please stop talking <laughs> or like scanning your melons anybody and your... who hears us talk <laughs> out broccoli but at the same time, like, unless we have these conversations and talk about it, like, when's it, gonna, it. Yeah, when's it going to change? Mm-hmm. I'm lucky enough that I found the joy of reading romance. And so that really opened my eyes to a lot of this. But a lot of women don't understand that and, and haven't, like, grasped that concept. So it's like, I'm hoping that because, you know, Gen Z and, like, a lot of the younger people seem to be more open-minded and accepting that it won't be be as like much of a stigma in the future because it's it's incredibly frustrating and I, i'm the type of person that if i i feel something i'm gonna talk i'm gonna tell people <laughs> about how i feel about it right i'm i'm gonna express my opinion but i love that you guys like your books are such an awesome segue into like sharing that with everybody yeah. i mean like Good. you deserve you deserve this happiness in your life and you shouldn't feel guilty pleasure over it guilty. Oh, me you, too. Shouldn't, you shouldn't feel guilty for what brings you happiness. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm here um, for that. Yes. I think this is why we love Fizzy so much is because we are such loud personalities ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I know we only have a few minutes left. So we wanted to wrap with some games that we yes. made. <laughs> we, we made. We made a PG version and called it Smash Mary Dash. Yeah. And we were curious to see if you guys would want to play this with your heroes and your heroines. Sure. Okay. And we also did, would you, would you, do you want to do that or would you rather first? Hmm, let's do would you rather. Okay. So we wrote down would you rather with some of your characters and I want to know. All right. Okay. Let's would you do rather it. Mia or Sarah? <laughs> I'm Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. I'm Sarah. I would say Sarah. 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 I said you, said, Mia. you said Mia? Yeah. Yeah. 
Which also, Lexi and I both felt so stupid not seeing Mia in so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a tiny. Where is she? <laughs> Literally, we're sitting here like, wait a minute. So she finished it first and she's like, where's the where's the wild seasons cameo and i was like i'll find it and i'm going through i'm like i can't find it either <laughs> and then we're like god we're so stupid how did we not see that she's her dance teacher i love that easter egg okay anyway uh josh or elliot oh man really it's elliot Ooh. it's elliot come on it's elliot i'm gonna say josh i'm gonna say, say well. elliot yes! i'm gonna say elliot <laughs> but my number two would be josh so that's very yeah. hard I feel or oliver way. or river Oh my god. We have, okay, we've got a couple favorites. more. We got a couple more. God. All right. So Chloe or Harlow? Ooh. This is hard too. Chloe would scare me a little. I'm gonna go with Harlow. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Harlow Chloe. Terrifying. Harlow's so scary. <laughs> I would do Chloe. Really? What about you? Harlow. I think Chloe. You think Chloe? Yeah. I think Harlow. She's, she's boss. All she's right. Bosses, though. And this one is the hardest for me. This one's mean. Will or Finn? <sighs> I'm sort of married to a to a Finn type ish character. Um, oh, no, yeah. no, I mean not <laughs> type ish. <laughs> um, cool, got a little hot in here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say Will. I'm gonna say Will. Her <laughs> I like I nerds. <laughs> I don't know if I answered this one or not. I don't. It's this is hard. I literally texted her this list last night, and she was like, "How dare you?" When I mentioned Will and Finn, because they're they're so good. Yeah. I, I feel like it's Will, right? All around Will, but like for certain situations. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we agree, Elliot is the all time best book boyfriend ever. That's all I care about. All right. So, uh, Smash, Mary, Dash, um, contemporary boys. Yeah, from your contemporary romance novels. Who would you smash? Who would you dash? And who would you marry? I mean, uh, I picked Mia earlier purely as an extension of Ansel because I Those are standalones, love... not series. Oh, oh, oh. Um, okay. We're going to do series too, though. Don't worry. Standalones. All right. I'm going to smash. This means bang, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to smash. I have to look at our butt. <laughs> I think I'm going to smash River. Oh. What's the second one? Mary. Mary. I'm going to marry Josh and I'm going to let Sam just see his way out the door. Oh, bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. You should have groveled more. I don't know why your authors didn't make you grovel more. <laughs> I'm going to say him. he did. It's I, I remember. Ugh. I'll say the same, except I think I'm going to marry Ethan. No, I mean, I'm going to smash Ethan. Oh, wait, Elliot. Oh, my God. I'm going to marry Elliot. What am I Dude, talking about? I was going to ask you. I was like, wait a minute. Sorry. You just said Elliot over, over Josh. <laughs> I'm going to marry Josh. Okay. I'm I'm going to I'm gonna smash. <laughs> They're so conflicted. <laughs> it's hard. I know. It's, it's really. We're looking at my shelves. We're, We're like, who are book. our heroes? Oh, no. oh, I think Andrew. Andrew, I was going to say. From Holidays. He has some Harry Styles vibes to me. And then Sam, yeah, we'll let Sam go. You can go. Sam, bye, Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are your answers? Um, I think. Oh, Ryan's just. Know, my cat just made an appearance. Um, <laughs> Smash. Uh, Ethan, Mary, Elliot, and I think Dash Andrew. Uh -huh. I think I would. I think I would smash River. I would definitely marry Elliot in two seconds. I don't. I don't know who I would dash on. That's hard. I would say I would say Andrew. I would, uh, yeah, I would say. I love Andrew. I, I know. I don't like Andrew. He's just more boy next door. You know. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. Um, okay. Do you want to do series? Or do you want to do series. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I know Christina already gave us Ansel. Is that is that your Mary choice, or is that your Smash choice? Uh, I think he's my Mary choice. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think um, Smash. You know what? I love Luke from Wicked Sexy Liar. Yeah. I love me a man who is in love, like, in two seconds and totally whipped and it has no But you idea also what to love the, like, it. flirty cocky boy. But yeah, I, I have a type. My type is, like, Ansel, um, Luke, Luke yeah. Ethan, you know. And then Dash. Uh, uh, Jensen. Jensen, maybe. But the thing is, is like, Bennett scares me. <laughs> I love Bennett, 
but he scares me a little. I don't know what I would do. I think I, I worry I would murder him. <laughs> I think I'm going to say smash Will, Mary Oliver, Dash, oh, probably Jensen. Jensen or, yeah. I love Jensen. I just. I think, I think those are my answers too. Lo, you and yeah. I have the same. Yeah, we I do. Know, for yeah. Sure. I think mine's the exact same answer. I think if you just said this, please excuse my terrible short term memory. <laughs> I think Smash Finn, Mary Will, Dash Jensen. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. No, I said Dashing Finn okay. is a great choice. Yeah, I would. I would Smash Will. I'd, I'd marry Oliver. Yes, Smash Finn. Ed Especially Finn. as Oliver's so nerdy. Like he's wait. I'm really excited for stuff to start Wild Seasons. So she. Can oh my god, Oliver. He's nerdy, but he that book is so porny. I mean, in the <laughs> best way. Like, I was rereading it. You, that book is the sexiest book I think we have ever written. Oh, good. And that's, and we wrote Wilds or um, Player because I listened to Player on a plane for the first time and I was like, sure, I was going to burst into flames and the, the no, plug was going to come out of my phone. I'm pretty, uh, everybody was going to know what I was listening to. Yeah. <laughs> true. Just looking at your face. It's true. Max and Sarah, they, they have quite, quite the adventurous life too. They do. They do. So that, that's, that's. I, dude, it's I was I was like screaming last night at Haley and Lexi. I was like, "Who gets on an elevator and stops it, and no one checks why the elevator stopped?" I agree. <laughs> but um, yeah, Bennett really made me angry for yeah, the good. first half of that book. I was like, "He should." He was a dick. Yeah, I was like, "What are you doing, Chloe? I really like you. You're so smart. Why are you doing this?" And then by the end, I was like, okay, love fine. Him in the rest of the series. Now that he's mm -hmm. officially whipped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love him in now the that she has true. her boot on his balls, I think I'm, I'm in yeah. for the ride. So <laughs> she's always in control. That's the wonderful thing about that book mm -hmm. is that like, you think that he's the boss. He is never in control. Never. Even yeah. in the very beginning when the other of them is like, sure, what's going on? She's yep. always the one who's calling the shots, which I yep. really, really liked. Because mm -hmm. that was one of the first ones that you guys wrote too. So like outside of or like in, into the publishing world. so i'm like fuck mm -hmm. yeah that's a great intro we love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was know. an intro for sure <laughs> you know, right so i'm like all right staff we gotta get you the rest gotta get you the rest of the books so you can uh, you can finish it out but ah uh, i know you guys have to get going because our hour's up but that was, was super so fun you guys right it was really it was, fun was we so could do this nice. all day <laughs> literally all day literally all day okay so but to close out for those of you guys who are still tuning in Soulmate Equation is out right now. You can go click the link in chat and go to the soulmateequation.com or you can buy it at any local bookstore, preferably indie. Please shop indie. We love supporting them. Um, and then is the Romans link, is the print still available to buy or is that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We, they have, Romans has signed copies. And then also at the soulmateequation.com is our book tour stops and they all have bookmarks or signed book plates. Yes. So you can okay. get those. Yeah, this is the, the, it doesn't actually look purple. This is the advanced reader copy. It yes, looks yes. yellow and the hardback is really beautiful. So you guys should all go check it out. But thank you so thank much, you so so much. Christina thank Lauren. You. Thank you so much. This was so fun. This was Hi. super fun. We're just gonna, awesome. we're just gonna um, put ourselves in your schedule for sexy clue yeah, and cowboy adventure. So. Yes. You can come to us with anything you need. We'll be here. Bounce ideas off of. Yeah, we just need you guys to make a title for the book. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. We'll Drop ideas. that in our DMs. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys have an awesome rest of your book tour. And good luck Thank with you. everything. We're so excited for you. Oh, now Thank everybody you. go buy it. A copy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. Have a good one. Bye. Mm-hmm.